Welcome to the kill test. Ready? Cut the head off. Let's do this. It will kill. The sword of Perseus. Son of Zeus, the Greek demigod Perseus is best known for decapitating the Gorgon Medusa with his mighty sword. The legendary weapon is described as having a short, leaf-shaped blade that was perfect for cutting, slashing, and thrusting. Perseus was given this blade by the Greek goddess Athena, who wanted Medusa destroyed. Later in the myth, Perseus used the head of Medusa to turn the massive Kraken sea monster to stone, saving the princess Andromeda. Though the story is fiction, you can watch Perseus slay Medusa in the film Clash of the Titans, or visit renowned artist Benvenuto Cellini's bronze depiction in Florence, Italy. I don't want to see him turn into a rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Now, in Greek mythology, Perseus used his sword to decapitate Medusa and move her head from her body to use it as a weapon. To that end, I will take your weapon and help me to deliver some killing slashes and blows to liberate her head from her body. Robert, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Going into testing, I am concerned about the weight. I'm hoping my blade can do everything that Doug wants it to do, but I'm concerned. Robert, let's talk about your sword here. I like the design that you have of the Damascus in there, but it's so heavy. It's about five pounds over here, but the thing is, it's so forward heavy. Most of the weight's up here. When I'm lifting this, I can feel all the stress right there. This is supposed to be meant to be a single-handed use weapon. Now, your edge is plenty sharp. It was easy to thrust and cut and it will kill. All right, Jared, your turn. You ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. With the test, you never really know what to expect, and anything can go wrong. All right, Jared. First up, you nailed the balance on this as a one-handed sword. It's about three pounds lighter than your opponent's. Your edge is razor sharp. Every slash is deep. The thrust, no issues at all. And most importantly, sir, it will kill. All right, Bladesmith. Next up is the strength test. Release the Jamie Lee. All right, Bladesmiths, we took Medusa's head during the kill test. Now the Kraken's turned to stone. So what I'm going to do is take your swords and beat them mercilessly into these stone Kraken heads. It's going to be brutal. And Rob, you're up first. How are you feeling? A little nervous, but I'm ready. Let's do it. This is the make or break test. Bounced off the glove, didn't cut me. Oh, what's that? My blade breaks, my heart breaks, but I am just so glad that it didn't hurt Jay. Oh, a little bit of a problem here, Rob. On the tang, you can see a black spot, so it means you had a stress fracture there. And with the weight of this sword hitting those stone Kraken skulls, it was enough to allow that stress fracture to just continue all the way across. So. The good part is that your edge held up. So good job on the Damascus, but it's kind of hard to swing a sword without a handle on it.
Well, Robert, your blade broke after four strokes on this crack in head, but that doesn't mean that you're out of the competition. Jared, your blade still has to survive four strikes. Jay, let's get crack a lacking. This is it right here. Let's see what it did to Rob's blade. My sword's got to hold up four swings, and I know Jay, you know, he's going to try to do some damage. Jared, your blade survived. Robert, unfortunately, your blade cannot continue to be tested in this competition. And for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Come on forward, my friend. You killed the Medusa, though. <laughs> it's a heartbreaker, but I'm really proud of what I did. Jared, congratulations. The strength of your weapon has ensured that you are the Forged and Fire champion leaving this forge with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. How you feeling right now? Good. How about a smile or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on over and shake our hands, brother. Good Thank job, you. man. Good Thank job. You. I am the new Forged and Fire champion, something I never thought I'd say. I can't wait to get home, give my daughters the news, and, and uh, take the 10 grand, take my family on a vacation somewhere. Hattori Hanzo, a thousand layer katana. Whoa. Born in 16th century Japan, Hattori Hanzo, also known as Devil Hanzo, was perhaps the most legendary samurai to ever live. Almost 400 years later, in the 2003 Tarantino cult classic Kill Bill, Hattori Hanzo is reimagined as the modern day bladesmith who creates a katana so fine it would cut God. In reality, the katana is the majestic symbol of the ancient warrior samurai, featuring a simple but elegant single-edged blade designed for precise cuts and lightning-fast thrusts. The dazzling Damascus layering produces not only a beautiful piece of steel, but an incredibly sharp and deadly cutting edge. Bladesmiths, a Hanzo's katana's first duty is to kill. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your katana and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. All right, Mike, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Mike, your edge is razor sharp. But more importantly, there's bone on your edge, but your edge did not roll, did not chip, and your blade stayed true. Overall, sir, your blade will kill. Thank you. Tristan, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Tristan, the balance of your blade is very good. It's light, it's fast, it's easily maneuverable. But when steel meets the skull, there were some problems. Your blade took a serious bend. Also, on the edge right here, you took some chipping. But overall, looking at the dummy, I think your weapon will definitely kill. Thank you. Gentlemen, 
The second duty of a Hanzo Katana is that it is to be sharp. It is said that the Hanzo Katana is as sharp as a thousand razor blades. Now, a sharp blade should cut cleanly through a tatami mats. A dull blade will crush, bend, or get hung up. A dull blade is not a Hanzo Katana. Mike, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. Your blade, sir, is sharp. It cut cleanly through the thickest of our tatami mats, but on the back end slice, it did not cut completely, though. Overall, sir, your sword will cut. Thank you. Tristan, your turn. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be, sir. Well, Tristan, your edge is sharp. It can cut through the tummy mats. My concern is the strength of your blade. It picked up another bend. Now you have two bends on your blade, especially right here, close to the guard. Tristan, this Hollywood competition has been exciting and dramatic. You've been at the epicenter of all of that drama. Nobody is questioning the strength of your character. However, the strength of your blade is such that we can no longer continue to test it. For that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Mike, you are an unstoppable force in this competition, and your Hatari Hanzo Thousand Layer Katana is absolutely deadly, earning you the title of Forged and Fire Champion and a check for 10 grand. Good job, brother. I am Forged and Fire Champion, and it feels awesome. The Sika Sword. The Sika is a short but dangerous sword widely used by gladiators in ancient Rome. Since it was customary to fight with armor, the blade featured a sharp curve specifically designed to get around an opponent's shield. A gruesome killer, warriors would use its lethal inner edge to sever limbs or the blade's deadly point to hook into the jaw and pierce through the head. Today, the Sika is often depicted in popular culture during graphic gladiator battles most notably in the television series, Spartacus, Blood and Sand. Bladesmiths, this is a kill test. We'll take your Sika sword and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Frank, you're up first. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Nice. <laughs> well, Frank, your blade is sharp. In combat, the Sika is sometimes using its curve to pull away the sword and come in. In this case, he pulled away the head. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Tony, you ready? Mm-hmm. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Tony, this is a scary Sika sword. On the initial hack into the chest cavity, it penetrated so deep, it totally demolished this ballistic dummy. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Tony's blade just performs great on this thing. I mean, even though they both will kill, his just looked a little bit more violent. So it has me a little, uh, a little nervous. Gentlemen, this is the strength test. In order to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm going to attack these shields. Remember, this test is all about what the shields do to your weapons, and not what your weapons do to the shields. Frank, you're up first. Are you ready? Yep. Let's do this. Well, Frank, your edge held up perfectly. All right. It's still straight, 
is still sharp. Everything is still tight and solid. Well done. Thank you. Tony, you're up next. Are you ready? Yes. Well, Tony, your edge held up perfectly as well. Razor sharp. I see no problem with the edge from the shield and all. A nice solid blade. Well done. Thank you. Good job, man. All right, gentlemen. Now it's the sharpness test. I'll be cutting through this sugar cane. One cut with the front edge of your blade, one cut with the back edge. All right, Frank, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yes. Frank, right off, your blade's got a really nice balance to it. You can see on that first cut, it kind of pulled in my hand, but it's still a good feel. On the back cut, blew right through. Any gladiator using this, be quick, be deadly. Well done. Thank you. All right, Tony, you're up. You ready for this? Yep. So, Tony, is it sharp? Yes. It's very sharp, and it cut very nicely. It's still right, still tight. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, over the course of three rounds, both of you has displayed excellent bladesmithing talents. However, in this arena of competition, there can only be one champion. Tony, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. Frank, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Please surrender your blade. I'm fine with this result. They both killed, but his uh, really killed. <laughs> Tony's already invited me to come up there and forge. He's going to show me some stuff. I'll know Tony probably the rest of my life. Tony, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion. And that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. How do you feel right now? I feel pretty good. All right. Well, Tony, please present your weapon to the judges. Just a minute. <laughs> OK, I'm still here. It's not a dream. <laughs> I won. It's awesome. How do you put it in words? Game of Saw and I conquered. The Nambi Nulu. <laughs> The Nambe Nulu is a ceremonial sword made by the Nambe tribe of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Featuring an ornate wooden hilt and an embellished scythe-shaped blade, this intimidating weapon was reputedly used around the late 19th century for the sacrificial beheading of tribal slaves. The razor-sharp outer edge of the hook was said to separate the victim's head from his neck in one swift fatal strike. Following the abolition of human sacrifice, the Nulu transitioned from executioner's weapon to an insignia of prestige carried at ceremonial dances. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The Nambi Nulu wasn't just a weapon used by tribal chiefs to show status. It was also known as the beheading sword of the Congo. So to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Nambi Nulu and I'll deliver lethal slashes on this ballistics dummy. And though, I'm going to try to take its head off. They're going to actually cut the head off of this dummy. Who does that? <laughs> oh, my God. That was badass. All right, Paul, let's talk about your Nambinulu. It feels good in the hand. It's got a razor's edge here that, upon its initial delivery into the gut, that dug in deep all the way into the bowel. Yeah. Now, for its intended purpose of going up to decapitate the head, well, come on, it's got no head, it's dead. <laughs> your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Steven, it's your turn. You ready? Yes, sir. I'm going to head on over and grab your sword. I'm a nervous dude, and I really hope that my blade hangs with his.
All right, Steven, your blade is sharp. It lacerated all the way into the bowels. But you can see that cut through the jaw and all the way through the head. The wood that you have here, it's smooth, but it's the indexing that you have for that. The way you have it flattened out and avoid that feels good in the hand. Yes, sir. And it will kill. Thanks. Gentlemen, this is the sharpness test. To test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be cutting into our cane man here. Paul, you ready? Yes. This is what I love to see come back in the third round. This feels like a weapon. It cuts like a weapon. It went right through that cane. You nailed it. Thank you. All right, Stephen. You ready for this? Yes, sir. <laughs> Your weapon, same weapon, different feel. It's a different weight, it's a different balance, but the cuts, you can see, it just passed right through. There wasn't any resistance on that cane. Nicely done. It feels good to have made something that's effective. Gentlemen, to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm gonna chop into these clay pots. This is not about what your blades do to the pots, but what these pots can do to your blades. Paul, you're up first. Hitting something as hard as a clay pot, I don't have any idea what it's gonna to do to my edge. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The balance is really nice on this. It's heavy where it needs to be heavy. When you're swinging it, you know where it's going. Right, there's a slight roll on the edge of your blade right here that I can get a fingernail on that. Everything down at the handle and the guard are still tight. Yeah, other than that one roll seems to have held up well. All right, Steven, you ready for this? Yes, sir. OK. Nice and straight. I don't really see anything out of alignment. Your blade's a little bit heavier than Paul's, but it's got a good feel. It's got a good balance. The wood you've got in the handle and the extension of this handle has put the balance in a really nice place. Cool. Yeah, I can't feel any deformation on the edge. Well done. Thank you. Paul, Stephen, the judge's deliberation is complete, and they've made their final decision. The Forged and Fire champion is. Steven, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Paul, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Paul, you both made beautiful weapons, and they both performed beautifully, too. So then we had to look at the finest of details and that rolled edge in the strength test. Well, that was a deciding factor. So that's why we have to send you home. I understand. Paul, thank you very much for turning in such a beautiful weapon. But now I have to ask you to surrender it and please leave the forge. I certainly accept the judge's decision. My edge rolled and Stevens didn't. First thing I'm going to do when I get home is clean my shop and get on with what I usually make. Steven, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for 10 grand. How do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> it's a little surreal. I damn well proved what I came here to prove. I am creative and that I can make a functional weapon and that you don't have to be the most experienced. If you put your heart into stuff, things you know, can turn out well. It was fun as hell, and I'm glad that I came out on top. The Waldo. The Waldo is a polearm weapon that has been wielded by Korean warriors since the 6th century. The large crescent blade provided the user with incredible force that delivered lethal blows and deep cuts with one swing into an opponent. Historically, this heavy weapon required special skills and was only wielded in battle by elite Korean warriors. Today, Korean martial artists who specialize in the Waldo perform intricate maneuvers with this intimidating weapon at festivals and cultural events. Beitsmits, annyeonghaseyo, and welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapons will do, I will take your weapons and deliver lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Eric, you're first. You ready for this? Yes, sir.
All right, Eric, let's talk about your Waldo here. It is forward heavy. There's a lot of metal in here, but it is wieldable. Now, your edge is sharp. It penetrates deeply into this Belixis dummy, cutting the gel torso and into the bones. Overall, sir, your Waldo, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Dave, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Dave, let's talk about your Waldo here. It is a, a little bit heavier than the other weapon. Heavier weapons require a lot of adjustments, but your edge here is sharp. With this forward weight, it cuts deep into this ballistic dummy and cuts the bones inside. But in doing so, sir, your edge over here did take a little bit of rolling. But the other parts are fine. And overall, sir, your Waldo will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test. We're calling this one the Bamboo Man Attack. To test the overall construction of your blade, I'm going to take them and gently tap them against our Bamboo Man over here. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, this is not about what your weapons do to these targets. It's about what these targets do to your weapons. Eric, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. So Eric, right off, this is a heavy beast. Your balance point's not bad. I kind of like that right there where you can manipulate the weapon. As far as the weapon performance goes, you maintain an edge all the way along. It's still sharp. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Dave, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Dave, your weapon is really, really heavy. So you can make a devastating cut, but recovery is, is really slow. As far as the blade, the blade itself is, is dented sideways here and up above here, but still solid. So you survived quite nicely. Well done, Dave. Thank you. Bladesmiths. This is the sharpness test, the sugarcane slice. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I'm gonna attempt to cut through all these sugarcanes. Unlike the strength test, this is all about what your weapons do and how well they cut the sugarcanes. Eric, are you ready to do this? Yes, sir. All right, Eric, let's talk about your edge here. Your edge, it's sharp. It cuts through all the sugar canes. And overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. Dave, it's your turn, sir. You ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, Dave, let's talk about your weapon here. It's still sharp, and it cuts cleanly all the way through, but the weight of your blade as I'm cutting dragged downward, and I ran out of sugar cane. But overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. 
Well, gentlemen, you both performed extremely well in our Korean theme challenge. Both your Waldos did great during our tests, but this is a competition and there has to be a winner. The judges have made the decision, and today's Forge and Fire champion is... Eric, congratulations. Now, Dave, you fought hard, but unfortunately, you're not today's winner. Your time in this competition has ended, and for that reason, I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. Good job, man. Well, Eric, you know what that means. You are the newest Forge and Fire champion. You're gonna be walking out of here with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. I feel awesome coming out here, winning the competition, having my skills validated. This is a crowning achievement of mine. Well done. Thank you. If somebody wants me to make a walled dough, it's gonna cost them 10 grand. The Vajra Mushti. Wow. Originating in India, the Vajra Mushti is an edge knuckle duster. The unique design features sharpened blades on every side of the handle, making it a specialty weapon only wielded by well-trained Indian warriors. The sharp edges on all sides provided the user with a wide range of lethal attacks, from deadly stabs and slashes to devastating punches. A traditional Indian martial art where the weapon is tied to the fists of wrestlers has lineage dating back to the Middle Ages and is still practiced today by professional wrestlers in India using non-lethal knuckle dusters. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your weapon and deliver multiple lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Kyle, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. All right, Kyle, let's talk about your weapon here. I was worried about the finger welds that you had there, that they would be an issue, especially when I'm punching. No issues there. I like the fact that as it gets slippery, it gave me a very good grip. Overall, it is a beautiful piece, and your weapon will kill. Oh, yeah. All right, Ben, your turn, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Ben, let's talk about your weapon here. The edges are very sharp, but there are some sharp edges that you have in here. Every movement started to give me a little bruise and cut off some skin right there. But in terms of what this weapon will do, it will kill. Thanks, Doug. My hand. <laughs> All right, Blaze Smith, welcome to the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your Vajra Mushtis, as well as their overall construction, I'll be stabbing and punching into this sheet metal and chain. Kyle, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep. All right, Kyle, in this strength test, your two long blades held up great. The center blade here took some chipping on that chain. I'm looking at the grain in there, and it's, it's pretty big. Uh, I would have liked to have seen that refined. But in general, these two blades held up well. Nice job. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right, Ben, you're up. You ready for this? Sure am. All right, Ben, well, the first thing I feel when I pick this weapon up is its sheer mass. I mean, it's a heavy, heavy weapon. That did you some justice in the strength test. The only thing I could see is a little bit of glinting on the lower blade, but the middle blade, it took a pretty major deflection right here. It kind of cracked one more little, little hit here, and that would just come off. The main thing working against you on this blade is the rough inner surface. 
I couldn't really find a real comfortable way of getting this finger out of harm's way. But after the strength test is all in one piece, nice job. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, we know your weapons can heal, and we know they are strong. Now it's time to find out just how sharp they are. To find out, we'll take your weapons and deliver some stabs and slices on these spice bags. Kyle, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep. Let's do this. All right, Kyle, let's talk about your weapon. It is comfortable. It's a good fit on my hand. It's got a pointy enough tip over there, but with that one piece where you're missing some edges, it was more of a jagged cut. When it came to stabbing and slashing on both weapons on each end, it'll cut. Good job. Thank you, Doug. Ben, your turn, sir. You ready? Ready. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, Ben, let's talk about your weapon. The weight that you have here back up the cut because you have very sharp edges and the cuts are very deep. But my hand, when I'm making impact, still rubs on the inside of your handle. But other than that, sir, your beast, it will cut. Thanks, Doug. All right, guys, you guys both came through with unbelievable pieces of work. Unfortunately, we can only send one of you guys home with the title of Fortune Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. And our champion today is Kyle. Congratulations. Ben, unfortunately, you're not walking home the champion today. The time has come and I have to ask you to leave the forge floor. All right. Thank you, guys. This Thank was you. awesome, for sure. Good job. Kyle, amazing job. I busted my butt and honestly did the best that I could, so I don't have any regrets. Well, Kyle, congratulations. You'll be leaving here with the title, Forge and Fire Champion, and a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. My wife's going to be super pumped when I tell her that I'm the next Forge and Fire Champion. What are you going to do with that cash, man? My wife and I are probably going to use it for a down payment on a house. That's cool. yeah. absolutely nice. fantastic. Nice. Cool. 18 months ago, I would have never imagined being here today. Hell yeah, I'm Forge and Fire Champion. <laughs> The Dahomey machete. This lethal machete was once wielded by the legendary all-female army in Western Africa known as the Dahomey Amazons. The long, slightly curved blade flared out to a wide tip, giving the female warriors the ability to deliver fatal blows that cut clean through bone and flesh in a single blow. These skilled women warriors were an elite fighting force and extremely intimidating, often carrying trophies of their fallen enemies. The machetes were a powerful weapon designed to cleave through anything that got in their way. Today, the Dahomey machete can be seen wielded in the 2020 HBO series, Lovecraft Country. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. I will take your machete and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Alex, you're first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. I'm most concerned about everything with this test. I'm not sure it's sharp enough. I'm not sure it's strong enough. I don't know what it's going to do to my plate. I have no idea. All right, Alex, the balance you have your blade is nice. For every cut, I can really control and feel like I'm chopping in there. The edge, no issues at all. It is still very sharp. More importantly, sir, your machete, it will kill. Thanks. All right, Adam, it's time to have fun with your blade. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. I hope my blade doesn't break. I had a lot of setbacks making this blade. You know, I had to start over. I hope it doesn't come back to bite me in the butt. I'm saying a little prayer. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Yes. 
All right, now let's talk about your weapon here. This is a very forward heavy blade, but that forward weight really cuts deep into this ballistics dummy. Overall, sir, you will keel. That's worth it right there. I can go home now. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test, the shield chop. What I want to see on top of how durable your blades are is their effectiveness against that shield, all right? So, Alex, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, so, Alex, obviously there's a bit of an issue. What happened here is you can, you can see the grain size. It looks like 40 grit sandpaper, which is really, really large grain. Um, and then right here, see that black? Yeah. That was a crack. OK. So that crack existed probably during the heat treat. Once I hit just face onto the shield, it just cut loose. Alex, we hate to see that. Your blade had a catastrophic failure, but you are not out of the fight just yet. Your blade broke on the fourth strike, so that means, Adam, in order to become Fortune Fire champion, your Dahomey machete must survive four strikes. You ready? Yes. Everything is riding on these four strikes. I need my machete to hold together. I've got to make it through this. Well, Adam, you survived your four strikes. That means you are the Forge of Fire champion, so congratulations. Alex, unfortunately, you didn't win this round. You crush it in round one and round two, but your time in the Forge has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. Thanks. I'm a little disappointed, but I'm definitely proud of the machete that I made. Making something this big was quite a challenge. It's a learning process, so. I'm definitely glad I had this opportunity. I'm glad I got to know all these other Smiths. This was fun. It was, it was a blast. Well, Adam, your blade survived the four strikes. It's a beautiful beast. And it just won you $10,000 in the title of Forge and Fire Champion. Congratulations, man. Well done. Is it everything you thought it would be? And more. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Wow. What an experience. It's kind of surreal, but it's a great feeling. It's awesome. My family supported me, so kids, we're going to Disney. The Mesopotamian Sickle Sword. <laughs> the Sickle Sword originated in Mesopotamia at the height of the Bronze Age, around 2500 BC. These sickle and curved shaped swords often symbolized royalty and power and were primarily wielded during ceremonies by kings and authority figures. Although these swords were not common on the battlefield, the belly of the blade allowed for quick, devastating blows and inspired designs for later weapons, such as the deadly Egyptian kopesh. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. So to find out what kind of lethal damage they will do, I'm gonna take your weapons and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Jake and me up first, ready? Cut the head off. Let's do that. All right, Jacob, let's talk about your sickle sword right here. Your edge is razor sharp. Coupled with the fact that this is a very light weapon, I can use velocity to really wield that sharp edge. It cuts deep into this ballistics dummy. And overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Robert, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this.
All right, Robert, let's talk about your sickle sword. It's a very light blade, that much lighter than the other one. And the angle that you have in here lends itself to use not only velocity, but the sharpness of your edge to cut very deep into this ballistics dummy. And overall, sir, you will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test, the armored warrior chop. Test the strength and overall durability of your Mesopotamian sickle swords. I'm gonna be chopping into these armored warriors. Jacob, you're up first, you ready for this? I don't think I get a choice. You don't have a choice. What actually happened is your sword bit into the other sword by about 3 16 of an inch, and it took out this chip. And once that chip was gone, the whole sword blew up. Your grain looks good, but unfortunately, uh, it's just this sword against that sword. This time, that sword won. Yep. All right, Jacob, we hate to see this happen. You gave us a beautiful blade, but unfortunately, it did suffer a catastrophic failure on the seventh strike. But you are not out of the fight yet, because Robert, in order to become the champion, you will have to survive every single one of those seven strikes on the Armored Warrior. Are you ready? Let's roll the dice. All right, Ben. The big thing is, it's one sword. Nice job. Thank you. Well, Robert, you made it through all the testing. Jacob, it's a beautiful piece of work. Unfortunately, due to your catastrophic failure, we cannot continue testing. And for that reason, I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you, gentlemen. It was an honor. Thank, Thank you very much. Very nice job. Thank you. Uh, you know, it, it totally sucks. But I really am proud of the blade I made either way. You know, they said pretty much nothing but good things about it up until it broke. And well, I'd totally come back for this and maybe get a shot at making it all the way through. Well, Robert, we never like to see competitors' blades break, but yours did not. And that makes you the newest Forge and Fire champion. You just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Feel pretty good? Crazy, dude. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Winning this championship, I think, has really pushed me to my limits, and then that makes me want to push them even more. Now I'm a champion, I'm gonna go ahead and get my ABS Smith membership and just really refine my skills. Oh, this is the Elephant Tusk Sword. Dating as far back as the sixth century BC, the mighty elephant was used during warfare, often armed with the fierce Elephant Tusk Sword. This lethal weapon featured a socket that connected directly to the elephant's tusk. The double-edged blade was designed to inflict massive destruction as an elephant charged through barricades and ranks of enemy soldiers. Throughout history, there is evidence of thousands of elephant tusk swords being used in battle. However, only four pairs of these intimidating weapons still exist today. Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. In battle, these swords were attached to elephants who just rammed across its opponents. Find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do. We're gonna go hog wild on this ballistics dummy. Jaden, you're up first. You ready for this? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Oh. Oh. I wasn't expecting his head to come off. <laughs> All right, James, talk about your weapon here. 
Every thrust was deadly. It went all the way through. What I do like is I can see the Damascus pattern on your blade there. Jaden, your elephant tusk sword, it will kill. That's all I wanted. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? Hopefully my sword's not irrelevant after this test. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have fun. All right, Matt. It penetrates very deep, and on the way out, it cuts. It's a weighted weapon right here that when it thrusts, see the hole right in the middle of the ballistics dummy? It destroyed everything in there. Your weapon right here, it will kill. Thank you, Doug. All right, gentlemen, the strength test. We've mounted your elephant tusk swords on our battering ram here, and I will be attacking that armored soldier. All right, Jaden, you ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Fine. Jaden, I really have to commend you on the artistry of this blade. The low layer pattern really pops. The connections here are all really beautifully done. And for this test, that tip still has an edge. Everything is right and tight and true, and nothing's changed. Well done. Thank you. Matt, you ready to roll? Absolutely. OK. So Matt, your blade held up fine. The tip, it's a little bit duller than when it started out with, but I wouldn't run my finger down this edge. So nicely done, it held up beautifully. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, we know your weapons can kill and we know they are strong. Now it's time to find out how sharp your weapons are. This is the sharpness test, the guillotine fruit slice. We're gonna take your elephant tusk sword, release it and try to cut through the fruit. I want to see clean cuts all the way through. Jaden, you're up first. You ready? Hell yeah. All right, let's do this. Nice. All right, Jaden, your edge here, cut all the way through cleanly. Bottom line, sir, your elephant tusk sword, you'll cut. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm ready. All right, now let's talk about your weapon here. The weight on this, it drives the cut all the way through. Your edge is sharp. More importantly, sir, you will cut. Thank you, Doug. Well, Jade and Matt, you guys both perform exceptionally well during your tests. But as you know, only one of you guys will be leaving here with the title of Forge and Fire Champion. And today's Forge and Fire Champion is... Jaden, congratulations. You won, man. Matt, unfortunately, that means you did not come out on top today. I'm going to have to ask you to please step out. I'm proud of the sword that I've turned in. They were virtually the same performance. Good job, man. Yeah, you too. And Jaden's weapon, he turned in a work of art. And I think he deserves the title. First thing I'm going to do when I get home, kiss my wife and crack open a beer. <laughs> well, Jaden, that means you are today's Forge and Fire champion. You're going to be leaving here with a check for $10,000, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm the new Forge and Fire champion, and I'm really stoked about it. How old are you again? 19. 19 years old. That is extremely impressive, man. Thank you. Woo! I'm so bad at emotion. <laughs> Genghis Khan sword. Sweet. One of the most notorious rulers in history, Genghis Khan and his Mongolian army conquered the Asian continent through terrifying land seizures throughout the 13th century. Khan and his troops used the slightly curved sword to inflict deep and lethal attacks during horse raids, killing tens of millions of people in their path. 
This brutal single-edge blade was lightweight for sustained mounted combat, while the razor-sharp edge easily decapitated prisoners, which was often the tactic used when seizing new territory. Having established the Mongol Empire, one of the largest land empires to date, Genghis Khan remains one of the most prolific rulers in history. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your sword and deliver some killing blows to this ballistic dummy. Peter, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Peter, first up, your edge is sharp. The balance feels good, but it did take quite a pronounced bend. But the more important thing is, it'll kill. <laughs> I, I timed that perfectly. <laughs> All right, Doc Everett, are you ready, sir? Let's do some surgery. All right, Everett, your edge is very sharp. It slashes nicely. Your tip punctures easily, cuts on the way out. With all these cuts, it will kill. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I'll be attacking our armored targets over here. Peter, you're up first. Are you ready? Let her rip, Tater Chip. All right, Peter. Um, I'm going to start with your handle. I find it really comfortable, uh, the way it flares towards the tip. Works pretty good for my hand. And I love what you did with this kind of low layer count Damascus. It's very dramatic. But we've got some very deep rolls on this edge. Yeah, there you go. Here, those chips, that's an issue. But all in all, you did a good job. All right, Everett, you ready? I am. OK. Piece of armor. All right, Everett, your blade still spot on. What I really like is the fact that that, that blade is at its widest point, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch. You don't need weight and mass for strength in a properly tempered blade. That's really good. You've got a section of blade here that's not quite as sharp as it was right there. All in all, uh, I think you did a great job. Awesome. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the War Banner Slice. To test the sharpness of your blade, I will take your weapon and slash across these War Banners. Peter, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. So where your edge has a chip, you can see it catches and rips through the banner. Where it's not, it cuts nicely. Overall, sir, it will cut. All right, Everett, it's your turn. You ready, sir? I think this beats the hell out of peer review. 
All right, let's find out. <laughs> Okay, Arvid, your edge here does cut. It's sharp, it cuts in some of the areas. On some parts of it, it ripped, but overall, sir, it'll cut. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, based on what we've seen in the weapons test, the judges have made their final decision about which of you is our next Forest and Fire champion. Peter. Your sword took the most damage in our strength test. You had a rolled edge and your blade bent. For that reason, I have to dismiss you from the forge. I may not be the forge and fire champion, but I still think I'm a badass smith. Well, Everett, your blade is comfortable, well-balanced, strong, and deadly, and that makes you the forge and fire champion. And that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. Come on forward and shake our hands. <laughs> This experience was really fun. It was really tough in a lot of places, and uh, it's been a hell of a ride. 